Are we actually live? Okay, we are live. All right, everyone. Presented by Prize Picks. Promo code Light Years for one hundred dollar match on your first deposit. That's right. You put a hundred dollars in. They give you $100 match, prize picks, promo code Light Ears. Welcome to Light Ears. Sitting in for Andy Lou this week, I got my guy Vignesh. Ah, I'm from GSW Fast Break. Sorry, that's how you know it. it I, I kind of want to say Heartbreaker. In, in some aspects, I want to say this is what they've been all year. Should have seen this coming. Not the biggest shock in the world. On the other hand, they've been playing good ball for a while. I've been believing. And there were moments. What Just a frustrating loss. And, you know, we're recording this before the Kings and Suns game ends. Uh, that It'll end at some point during this. Uh, but it doesn't matter anymore. They're, for all intents and purposes, locked into the 9-10, playing next Wednesday, baby. It's a tough one, Sam. And I agree. I mean... Have we seen anything over the course of the Warriors this season against good, solid teams Mm -hmm. to indicate that tonight would have gone any differently? And yet, when the Warriors were revving up the Jets, Chase Center was loud, you've cut it to, what did we get it to? 5-3 at some point in the fourth quarter. You're thinking, Mm -hmm. oh my God, here we go. This is it. And then the wheels fell off the wagon. Um, And to be honest, the Warriors didn't play poorly. They played poorly in spurts. They played atrociously in that horrific second quarter, but they competed, they hustled, and they got done in by a night where they turned the ball over 16 times. That's on them. And the Pelicans could not miss from three. And that's a combination of many things, but it's bad defense and good shot making all at the same time, but just devastating loss. Um, This all feels very familiar. This feels like three seasons ago. I know, right? Revs it up. Th- this yeah. game's kind of perfect because I thought Draymond was phenomenal on Zion for the vast majority of the night. Steph had some magic down the stretch. There was a lot of moments in this game which gave you that feeling, that Warriors feeling. They're dialed in on defense. They're uh, moving the ball. Steph's hitting shots. Clay actually was probably better than Steph for majority of this game. Steph was better down the stretch, but Clay was m- pretty consistent. But despite all those signs that, that you know, the stuff we've seen for four championships, it's not that team. They're, it's not just those guys being a little older. Uh, it's the surrounding parts aren't the same. They don't have the right type of players to supplement it. I mean, we can go up and down the line. It, it, it was, I want to say, death by paper cuts, which is kind of, been the way it's been the whole way it's a little bit of everyone the core is a little worse than they used to be steve kerr's a little less equipped for this type of team than he was for the previous one the young players are not quite as good as i'm sure management had hoped they would be coming to the season the veteran players they brought in are just a little subpar and all that adds up to a team that's going to have a better record than last year's team. They're probably going to end the season with, what, 46 wins? A little below their Vegas line. This could have come out to, you know, a five seed if things broke a little differently. Like, I think they're clearly a, what, second-tier team. That's who they are. But but that's kind of that's kind of who they are. That's not what we expect from them. That's not what uh, the largest luxury tax bill on earth was was supposed to be and you know nights like tonight are just like that like you start buying you start believing they show you all this good stuff but ultimately they're just not those guys you want them to be and it's a shame because i think we want desperately we as fans right want desperately for them to recapture that magic and that's like that's the thing that keeps pulling you in despite all evidence to the contrary. But I think right. you said it, Sam. It's it's the the margins are so much finer than they've ever been. And it's an uncomfortable position for every warrior that's been a part of that, coaching staff included. Just to go mm-hmm. down the line, right? Because I think it's an interesting, fascinating experiment. I agree. I thought Steph was magnificent down the stretch and completely 
completely atrocious in various boneheaded turnover moments. And that final shot was absolutely rushed, and I have no idea what he's doing. Draymond didn't attempt a single shot. Was still fantastic and played some of the best defense I've ever seen anyone play on Zion one-on-one, but didn't attempt a shot, couldn't be a threat on offense. Clay rushed a couple. If you go up and down the roster, you can find it some small niggling bone to pick with every single person. On Yeah, this is helpful. Let, let's look through it. Um, you can really pick a bone. You have something that you can point out. Andrew, like, oh, that was Andrew Wiggins. Bit. I thought he played a good-ish yeah. game, but not enough. You know, yeah. not what they're hoping for. Not the uh, the bridge the gap player who's supposed to be in his prime. Too too many. You know, you can you can tie into it. Uh, Chris Paul. Yeah. Chris Paul might be the only guy I have no bone to pick with tonight, just because like. 38 years old, maybe 39 a month. Like, oh, I, I, this isn't exactly below what I was expecting from him. If anything, he's kind of exceeding it at this moment, but that's an aside. 100%. And I think the, the really the, the crux of this is the following. There have been two games. It's been exactly a week. A week ago, right, the Warriors were playing um, the Mavs. Sure. And tonight they were playing the Pelicans. And these are the five and six seed at this point. Six, five, six, seven, somewhere in that range, depending on how things break. I'm going to ask you a question, Sam. At any point, were you confident that the Warriors were going to pull off the comeback? Ooh. Outside of hope. Like, separating a hope from confidence. Did you have confidence? No, it was always a coin flip in my mind where I'm like, man, just get it to yeah. get it to a single possession game. And, you know, that's a 50-50 proposition. We've seen them in, what, 50 of those this year? And they're probably 25 and 25 of them. So that's kind of where much, I was at with it. Yeah. They're to, pretty much exactly your, down the middle. Yeah. To answer your question, at no point was I like, they figured it out and here comes the run. It was always like, let's just get this to a single possession game. And I trust if Steph or Clay has the last shot, like it's, it's a good a shot as you're going to get. Right. <laughs> and it's been that way for a lot of the season, right? Like you can run down the list of close wins of which there have been certainly a, a number of resounding fun ones. And the close losses, which have been many more. And it's always something like that. Like you hope and you you think maybe they've got it, but it's not the same as like, and I think part of it's something that we were texting about, which is that we're unable still at 81 games now into the season to identify on any given night who the best five or six, the best yes. rotation combinations yeah. are. How can you be confident that they figured it out when you don't even know who your best five are consistently? No, but before Steph came in at the end, I texted you. We were talking about this. I was like, do they bring Steph back in? Because Chris Paul's playing better than him. This lineup with Chris Paul, Clay, Moody, um, Draymond, and I want to say Trace. Yeah. That, that, that was lineup. Might have been yeah. Pods. yeah. That lineup was rolling. It was working. They were, for lack of a better term, probably the best players rolling that night. Uh, but then, you know, you got to go back to Steph because he's Steph Curry. And to be fair, he literally is the only reason they were in the game. In the stretch, what do you have? 15 points down in the fourth quarter. So, uh, but putting that aside, like it's always a question of like, okay, is this a Wiggins game? Is it not a Wiggins game? What do you do with Chris Paul? Because generally he's such a steady player, but he he causes other issues because he's 5'11. You know, Trace Kuminga didn't even play tonight. That's one less issue to figure out. Maybe he should have, but. Uh, it's just kind of like I don't I don't know what their best lineup is. I really don't know what their best lineup is. I know that their two best players are Steph Curry and Draymond Green, offense and defense. And in theory, you should mix and match around that. But it's simply it's it's just not that simple. It's never been, and I think that's one of the things that we were texting about this too. I've been writing about this mm -hmm. for about thirty games at this point. Mm -hmm. um, this team requires more than any team of this roster ex extracting value on the margins. Like, right. yes, I'm going to, you know, hack a someone to get four free points in the second quarter because I may need them in the fourth quarter. I'm going to yank this lineup a second of possession early because I feel like they're teetering and they may not last another possession before giving up something. And like, frankly speaking, um, I don't think that Steve Kerr has been the best coach to exact that margin on the fringes. I mean, that no. entire second quarter, I was I was simultaneously watching and listening on the radio, and it's just wave after wave after wave. And it's like, at what point 
do you stop it and just be like, hey, if we give up, what was it, 45 points and go down by 23 or, or 15 yeah. or 16 at halftime, at what point is that an insurmountable margin? The answer, it was insurmountable when it got to like 15. Correct. And you needed no. to stop it way before then. A, a perfect example of, you know, Steve has been saying all year, the margins are tighter this year. We're, we don't have the overwhelming talent gap we're used to. We have to be smarter in the margin. The second quarter, did they run a single pick and roll? Like, was it like at what point what were turnovers off of cuts in the motion offense that New Orleans had picked up on? Were you going to be like, okay, we can't just rely on running our base offense against these guys because they're bigger, faster, stronger, uh, and they're just generally a great defensive team. They have it figured out. At what point are we going to simplify this offense and just go a little mismatch hunting because we need to generate an easy shot and we need to not let them get out and transition so Trey Murphy can get another goddamn open three, you know? Like, the, the game was lost in the second quarter. Uh, maybe the 2016 Warriors could have come back from that because they could spot teams 15 points. It didn't matter. But the 2024 Warriors, they can't do that. And I want to say, like, that's on the coaching staff, but part of me thinks it's much bigger picture than that because I'm just looking at the whole thing. It's like, it's exactly what we're getting to. Or it's like, it, it's a little bit of everyone, you know? It, it's just who they are. And, you know, all time is a flat circle. All good things come to an end. Insert your 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 turn of phrase, whichever mm -hmm. one you prefer. But it, you've got a little bit left in the tank. And maybe Steph doesn't. I think the, the, the meta point of all of this is the Warriors are going to go as far in the playoffs as Steph takes them. And he's looked like he's had 50-pound ankle weights strapped to his legs for the last two games, not factoring yeah. in the ankle tweak that he had today. So... That's obviously concerning, and he's piled up a lot of minutes for a 34, 35, 36, whatever year old. Um, but the the other thing to note is, you know, the Warriors, people who have played the Warriors for a decade plus like CJ, or coaches who've been with the Warriors for a long time like Mike Brown or Willie Green, are all over the league now. They've, they're everywhere. They know exactly what's coming because the there has been no subsequent evolution after the first one. You know the pin down's coming. You know split action's coming. You know they're going to try to generate a back cut. You know they're going to try to do this. And teams are just like, we ain't having it. We've seen this before. We've seen this movie a hundred times before. It's been scouted to death. And yeah. it is not coincidental that the Warriors started making a run when their offense essentially boiled down to something that is, sure, more caveman-like in the, in the elitist NBA. But damn if it wasn't effective to see Trace getting downhill. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where we're at with it. Um, okay. I have a quick ad to read, and then we're going to get to some callers pretty quickly. I feel like tonight's a perfect night. Let's let everyone sound off a little bit, a little emotional. Look, they're still in the play-in. Tonight just sealed their fate. They're going to be in the 9-10 game. They're going to be in the 9-10 game next Wednesday. Steve Kerr just said in the post game, are you resting guys on Sunday? Hell yeah. So, you know. Steph is not going to play a game between now and Wednesday. Draymond won't. Most of those guys won't. Sucks it comes to that, but it's like, hey, nothing's going to change. Might as well give everything your best punch next week. Uh, let's let's see what happens, basically, is where I'm at with it, with the, the whole thing. Okay. Before we get to our ad, real quick. Guys, the Light, Years the Light Years podcast is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while your favorite sports team or players play. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 extra money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, MLB entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Prize picks is really simple to play. 
I can make my picks and submit the entry in less than 60 seconds. I mean, honestly, I've got the plan coming up next week. Warriors are likely going to play the Lakers. I'll probably play the Steph over. Whether it's the brain or the heart, it's going to happen. You know what? If it hits, I'm going to win double that way. It's going to be a lot more fun when that whole thing happens. And you know what? It's worked out for me more times than not this season. So download the app today. Use the promo code LIGHTYEARS for your first deposit match up to $100. That's right. You deposit $100, prize picks puts an additional $100 in with the promo code LIGHTYEARS. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Um, what do you make of Kuminga and GP2 not playing tonight? I want to ask you about that. It's, I guess they're hurt. I, I don't, the whole Kuminga thing has been very strange for me with his knee issues coming up in the money end of the season. And more or less, they've played fine without him, which kind of poses another set of questions. But GP2, it's just been disappointing since they've reacquired him. It's always been something on that front. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to injury shame anyone. I'm, I'm, I have no reason to doubt any of that sort of thing, but it's kind of like in a game like tonight where it really was kind of down to the wire, could they have used those guys? Yeah. And I think, so the Kuminga thing that I just realized, I didn't realize it before the game is that he's out with a tailbone contusion. And he's like struggling to walk around. It wasn't the knee tendonitis this time. And that was, I have tripped over. I saw, pel- I saw pelvic, but I guess tailbone yeah. is part of the pelvis. So I think fun. Steve announced it in, in his pregame press, or at least mm-hmm. that's what I vaguely recall reading. I have I have tripped over a fire hydrant and landed on that. It is not pleasant. Um, that being said, could the Warriors have used him? Absolutely. It's a, it's, I think the GP2 thing is a little bit more interesting to me because Kuminga, even against the Blazers, was out of control, kind of, flailing around but he was still one of their most efficient players on on both ends and could have added something it's another dimension on a night when wiggins doesn't have the shot for example gp2 has fouled a one three-point shooter in every single game that i have seen him play in more than like a couple of minutes or a spot cameo so i think for gp2 it's been a combination not only of availability of also when he's on the floor there's soaring leaping highs and also crushing lows when it's like oh god gp2 what are you doing here um, neither, I think GP two is the, the bigger question mark. Um, but Kuminga has been so consistent all season. Um, I don't know what it portends though, because again, you have this consistent log jam with the wings and it's like, you can never have too many, it seems, but with the warriors, you can, because you can never seem to play the right ones in combination. Um, and it just takes too long for the warriors to figure out what that looks like. So I, I don't have any meaningful thoughts here, Sam, just, it's tough. Yeah, it just it happen. sucks. Everything in context of tonight is just like, and that would have helped. And here we are. Um, cool. I'm just, you know what? I'm gonna bring some people up here. Let's get some. Let's get some thoughts. Let's keep moving. We're gonna start with Peanut. Perfect example of uh, the Warriors season if he if he can't figure out how to make it work on stage right now. <laughs> also, shadow watching the Kings Suns game, which is getting interesting down the stretch. Ooh, where are we at? What's the score? Score is one hundred seven one hundred three. Kings rebound. One minute thirty left. While we wait for Peanut, um, some of the chat. Uh, Germ 16 is asking, does anyone else think Moody is an underrated shooter? I I don't know if I'd describe him as an underrated shooter. He's he's just the weirdest player in the rotation because I feel like he simultaneously never gets enough run. He's always getting the odd, he's always the odd man out in the entire rotation. And at the same time, was he shooting on the season from three? 33 percent Something like that? It's not been pretty. He really hasn't – he's done everything well except for hit shots. Yeah, it's, it's, it's his lateral – Actually, it's better than I thought, yeah. so Lateral quickness and the fact that he happens to toss up a couple more bricks than he can afford, and then he gets mm-hmm. yanked in and out of the lineup frequently. I think Moody's properly rated, if I'm being honest. Like, teams respect him, but it's kind of like begrudging respect. Uh, oh, we got someone on stage. There we go. Ebony, what's up? Man – I told you, I that optimism over the past week 
is what's really I think that's what's really making this hurt. But can I just say this entire game for 48 minutes was the most ridiculous emotional roller coaster I've ever been on and the biggest headache. Like I'm still trying to recover. <laughs> the game ended like what 30 minutes ago. Um I spent half the game yelling at my TV how stupid this team can be and just like and you can't even blame like TJD or Pods who didn't play that much and was just meh he was a rookie tonight and then you know Moody who's you know playing in two to three minute spurts and you can't blame him either but then you watch Steph throw these passes that only work half the time and you can't do anything but scream at him and then he hits like what four threes in the fourth quarter so then you like praise him like you turn around and praise him for that right after it was just it was it was too much and I think not only should they rest them for Sunday I think they should just reevaluate how they approach the playing games as well. Like the lineups and like who's closing. I mean, Wiggins played, I don't know, better than usual, I guess. He got the spin move to work like twice and then never did it again, which doesn't make any sense. Like at least with JK, he's going to make the same mistake over and over again and get to the rim. And then, you know, you can say, all right, that works. But Wiggins does it twice, decides he doesn't feel like doing it again, and that's it. So I don't know. I, I had the same question of like whether or not a GP2 or Kaminga changes the outcome of this game. And I can't confidently say yes because Kaminga probably gets pulled in the second quarter and is the player that doesn't play for the rest of the game. And then, you know, GP2... Like you said, uh, he's probably going to foul a three-point shooter, and then you're, you know, right here where you are right now. <laughs> so I don't know how much better any of them, like how much better the outcome is if those two are playing. So, yeah, that was a tough one. I'm going to try to recover from this headache, but y'all have a good one. Appreciate you, Ebony. I mean, I, I the problem is – I have nothing to really argue with you about. Like, there's nothing to really debate on the subject in general. I think everyone's in agreement here. It's like we just are all dealing with different pressure points of which part bothers us the most, which one hurts the most. Uh, if, if you're watching Ooh. on playback, we've thrown on the Suns and Kings in the background, so we can see the final end of this game. It's 107, 107 here. Not that it matters at this can point. I? Al although I will say, if the Suns win. The Lakers have a path to the eight, which would affect who the Warriors play in the nine ten game. Uh, so, so there is some some interest here. But I'm I'm sorry I cut you off. Uh, what was that? No, I just wanted to add Draymond on Zion was hilarious. It was probably the highlight of the whole game. Okay, like Zion getting frustrated that he couldn't go left was the only thing that was like actually entertaining about this game and stuff hitting threes in the fourth quarter because he's Mr. Clutch. But anyways, that's the last thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought that that's like, it gets back to that. Why is it annoying? They lost. That. I thought Draymond played in a phenomenal defensive game. Thank you. Have any going forward? It's just, I think just season against, juxtaposed against the fact that they lost a three-point shooter on an inbounds play after a timeout mm -hmm. because they forgot to know they forgot to figure out who was guarding whom um is kind of what sums up the season it's like Draymond's playing outrageous individual defense and quarterbacking and then suddenly two people go with someone darting to the rim and Herb Jones is open in the corner yep classic indeed the classic here all right last shot let's see where the Suns see where the Kings go with this Reigning clutch player of the year, Fox. <coughs> he was very clutch last year. No way around that. I'm going to use this time to talk about our other sponsor real quick. Talk about 
Unified. Whether you're a world-class athlete or a podcaster like me, we all understand the importance of mental health and physical well-being and proper recovery for top-notch performance. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centered powered by the Energy Enhancement System or ESS, EES system. If you haven't heard of the EES system yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. And that's the game. If it's at all possible, Sam, I'm more upset now than I was 30 to 45 minutes ago. <laughs> I'll redo the read in a minute. Oh, I cannot believe. For everything for aligned for the Warriors to get everything aligned for the Warriors to get the eighth seed. And what happens? CJ happens. The revenge of Trey CJ. Murphy Isn't happens. Good? Trey Murphy Trey, happens. You yeah. know what? You know what? It's the NBA. That's just it's fair. I guess that is fair. So where does that put the standings for us? The Sacramento Kings just lost to the uh Phoenix Suns. Does that put the Warriors on a crash course with the Suns in the plan? I think it does. I I think it yeah. does. Oh, yeah. oh my god! Yeah, let's go light. Cause... Let's go light the beam. Oh about to go light the beam. Hey, I'm not mad about that. Not gonna lie, not mad. I mean, as it stands, well, as it stands coping. right now, mm-hmm. as it stands right now, Suns Lakers in the seven eight with the Lakers uh, in death in the Valley of the Sun and the Warriors traveling to Sacramento. As it stands right now, that is where it stands right now. So let me tell you more about the the EES system, guys. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation, whether you're here in the Bay Area or hundreds of other locations across the globe. Interested in experiencing the EES system technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash light years to learn more and find a center near you. That's U-N-I-F-Y-D healing.com slash light years. No material testimony on the Unified Healing website are intended or viewed as medical advice or a substitute for professional medical advice. All right, let's keep getting to callers. What's up, man? up anything more classic than the kings choking the last four games i mean i guess we choked too so you know yes we misery loves company correct correct Um, yeah i mean obviously frustrating game i think i my male pattern baldness uh increased exponentially um (laughs) (laughs) i don't got that bob meyer lock uh i guess I don't really want to talk off season because like the season's still going on. Correct. But, um, my thought is at what point do you think the offense adjusts to what it is now to like incorporate a second best player on the team? Because is it too focused on the split cuts and not mismatch for hunting? Um, you know, to get like a, a, a second player involved. I mean, by the way, I appreciate the call. They have to get the second player first for for me to to me to really go there. You could say they're too rigid in the players they pursue, uh, and so we never get to that point. But in general, I've felt okay when Steve's got a good player, he tends to figure out how to use him to a degree. Um, I think the bigger issue is they just have to they have to deal with the fact that if they want to get an impact player to be a true number two next to Steph, it's probably going to hurt trade wise a little bit. Uh, and, and Dave, like over the last three, four years, they've been overly pragmatic on that sort of stuff. Like there's always like, Oh, that many picks for X player. That's crazy. I don't want to be that guy, you know? So 
I, I don't actually think the offense is an inhibiting factor here. At least I need to see it be one before I go there. Yeah, I, I think it's possible to argue that, you know, maybe you need an injection of, of new ideas on the coaching staff. But mm-hmm. in general, you're right that we've seen the Warriors adjust and, and make the most of players that they possess. They're operating at an offensive talent deficit for sure, or a second star talent deficit for sure. I saw a graph today about team's uh, win percentage, kind of early checkpoint of the season, all-star break to now. And there's two teams whose graph looks like this, just soaring upwards after the all-star break and trade deadline. You know who those two teams were? Indiana and Dallas. Who first threw chips on the table and said, we're going to go out and spend some money and trade some picks and some players, and it's going to hurt us a little bit. We're going to go out and chase people that we think can gonna make Take a difference. risk. Going to take a little bit of a risk here that would, you know, this those picks down the line might not be the, you know, might look bad trading them. Yeah. It worked. It did. It did. You know? So both, by the way, Siakam and Gafford, whatever you think of them, would both be very helpful players for the Warriors. Uh, you know, I, I do wonder sometimes the Warriors, the KD move made them like, we only make moves where it's a home run. We're not trying to, we're not trying. Cause like Gafford would be the epitome of like, a single like no one's gonna say he's a home run player but like he does a couple things exceptionally well and he'll make your team better right so keep moving we got we got we got a lively bunch of people coming through i haven't i haven't heard from ishan in a minute here what's up man yeah, it's been a minute uh can you hear me yeah coming in line okay there. perfect yeah um pretty bleak i don't feel good about that at all uh, i'm not gonna lie they needed to show up didn't show up i i kind of checked out this season a little bit but them keeping tabs i watch every game i try to keep commentary to myself this year uh, because I, <laughs> i'm trying not to like get involved but a lot of excitement after a horrible portland game but it's like okay win is a win let's go let's try it um i'm really confused at I don't know, like every time they just shot themselves in the foot and I'm not going to be mad about freaking Trey Murphy bombing logo threes and CJ McCollum turning into the player he isn't. And um, like, let's say we're, we're down to five and then we get, we're down by five in the fourth and then, or I, I don't know if it was the fourth or third, but then like Trace Jackson Davis misses two free throws and then they hit a three on the other end. Or we're down by three and then we turn it over on an inbound. And then they hit a three on the other end. And it's just like, this is the team that 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 we are. And I'm tired of being gaslit into being like, we're back, we're back. We're not back. And and like I am so and I was kind of feeling okay about it. And then then the Kings lost. And now that is just caused me to be even more mad about this team because I feel like the old Warriors, that's a game that they win. I, I don't know, like so many times I'm so used to coming out of that being like, like that was a close one guys but we got it done but i don't know just like i'm so disappointed in steph um i i know he played well on the stat sheet and it looks good and but like that was such a jordan pool play at the end where you're throwing up a floater for, with 10 seconds left okay steph you make that do you think your team can defend for 10 seconds and 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 get a stop i, I don't I don't feel confident in that at all. And then the seven turnovers, but obviously he's the reason why we're in the game. I get it, blah, blah, blah. But, and then obviously I've shifted towards off season and now I'm like, Clay's earned himself a contract. So we're going to have to pay him. Kaminga's earned himself a contract. We're going to pay him. So we're not going to get Paul George. We're not going to get Embiid. We're not going to get Giannis. We're not going to get anyone. So it's like, fine, whatever. It's over. I'm done. That's all. <laughs> Strong call. Strong call. You know what? Like, but you kind of explained why they can't do those things. Uh, we'll have all off season to talk about it. But like, do you think Kuminga can be the second star for this team? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, what's Clay look going to look like the next four years? Right. So it's like one of those things where it's like, why lock yourself into a t- like? All right, a nine seed with the upside of a six. You know, like, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Like. Hey, this would be the time to make a bold move in the off season. So, yeah. And another thing I was like, I hate like coming on, like I hate like bashing on injuries, mm-hmm. but like, 
I just really feel like he needed GP2 this game. And that's so disappointing that he couldn't play because I really feel that CJ McCollum, that's a good matchup for GP2. Yeah, that's why, that's like, why you have that's, that's why you really, have on the team. Really, really disappointing that he didn't play today. And it is. Kamara, obviously, too. And I don't want to speculate on the on people's injuries, but it's just really disappointing that he wasn't there. That, yeah, that's agreed. all. <laughs> agreed. <laughs> this team needed. This team has no margin. They need everything working for them at all times. Ishan, appreciate yeah. you, man. Have a great evening. Especially spot on because we talk about a team that's used to swinging for home runs, and yeah. now they're like, "Oh, we we have nothing to play. We don't have. We don't. We're not confident that this is going to be a home run move. So we're going to sit in the ten seat in the playing spot." Exactly. Exactly. 100% where it's just like, ironically, they're swinging for home runs despite better logic in the draft is why they're in the situation. You know, we go back to the Wiseman pick. Kuminga has not been nearly as, as big of a mistake, but you could argue they could have done better making different moves with the number seven pick. Anyway, here we are. Um, Abdullah, what's up, man? Uh, you know, I think everybody is feeling the same thing. Uh, I think there's like a million reasons uh, why I'm frustrated after that game. But you kind of just, well, honestly, there's two things that frustrated me more than anything else. One, I could swear there was at least five times where Zion Williamson just tore a ball out of somebody's hand, which made me feel like it was one like speaking to the carelessness with the ball, but also just like want to, where it's like, he's just snatching the ball out of people's hands. And yeah. But I think the other thing is, I mean, you said it, Trey Murphy, this guy's hitting shots from like the other side of the court. And I can't help but watch this guy hit shots left and right and be like, he's in the same draft as Kaminga and Moody. Moody's getting yanked around playing two, three minutes stints, and Kaminga's not even in the game. And I think it just comes back over and over and over again to these key moments where you're just like, the front office, like, really, I think, miscalculated on a lot of these picks. Because, like, could we use a Trey Murphy in terms yeah. of, like, a six foot nine guy who has, like, unlimited range? Like, I remember also, like, articles of, like, they were interested in him and he was somebody that they were thinking about with that second pick. And I like Moody, but it's just one of those things where it's, like, there's so many times where these these guys who, like, they were connected to or the front office really liked who end up playing significantly better. And I don't know how much of it is player development and how much of it is just, like, the front office whip on guys. But I just – that was it. That was my feeling is like every time I saw Trey Murphy hit like another three, I was like, God damn it. How much could we use Trey Murphy right now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been through it with the Wiseman pick more than anything, but like also, you know, like Shangun with Houston, great player. Want to pick after Moody. Franz Wagner, he is better than Kuminga. Maybe he won't be better than Kuminga in two to three years. He is better than him today. That's I, I don't really think that's open for debate. And you see all these moves. And, and by the way, we're ignoring the obvious moves, which are, you know, you could have always traded those picks for players who fit the Steph Curry timeline a little better too. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's frustrating. Like particularly when you're looking at this situation, it's like you swung for home runs, you didn't hit home runs. And now we're, we're just watching old guys get old. I think if you think about the circumstances that had to conspire for the Warriors to be assembled for the dynastic era, it mm -hmm. required Minnesota passing on Steph twice, Draymond going in the second round, and then mm -hmm. tanking their way to Harrison Barnes and lottering their way to Clay Thompson, or close to lottering their way to Clay Thompson. And so for that, I, I think it, drafting is a crapshoot, is maybe the, the simplest way to put it. And so every time you decide to roll the dice there, you're operating with incomplete information as opposed to there's, it's very hard to hide a really good player in plain sight or really bad player in plain sure. sight in the NBA. Sure. Yeah. We can we, we, we can, and we have relitigated a lot of them. All right. Two more to get to.
or maybe one just to get to 30 G. All right, we get to Geo up here. Geo, what's up? Yeah, hey, what's up, guys? I mean, honestly, like my soul is broken today. Honestly, like my face. <laughs> I'm usually the gamer, but like, I did honestly believe that if they could somewhat win two games, maybe they could, like, I don't know, win a round or something, right? I did believe that. But then, like, like my thing is, right, like, unless this team has, like, a huge talent injection next season, like, like, I, like, I just don't, like, like, I don't really see a path after this year, like, I mean, honestly, I just, I don't, and uh, and honestly, I also don't see like okay, like like Steve Kerr, right? Like I I just wish he was more more, more of a creative coach next season because at least next season I feel like look forward to something, right? It's like something different, like a new like a new, a new system, a new, a, new, a new brand of basketball, like maybe possibly. Yeah, that's that's dead. So like, unless they get like Paul George or a challenge or something different, like I don't know, man. Like I'm exhausted watching this year after year after year after year like it's really getting tiring honestly like i'm just spiritually i'm just broken and and steph like i don't know man like i mean i i hope steph like he's just like tired he, 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 he look at this how i watch it like sometimes like he's probably just tired who knows but like that looks like slow sometimes i mean i don't know maybe he's just tired like i really hope next season he like put some pressure on this organization for, like do something different like for once like Please, yeah. for a do something different. That's my take on it. That's my take. Anyways. I agree. I mean, you're saying in the chat, running it back with this roster would be the definition of insanity. Like, what is the point? Not only are you not moving forward, it's also just expensive. Like, if you're going to go into the rebuild route, just fucking do it, you know? But I don't know if you want to add anything on top of that no i very little to add <laughs> I, I think it's pretty straightforward right it is the warriors are going to have to make some changes if there's any silver lining and i realize it's not time for off-season talk we might make some mm -hmm. noise in the plane and beyond but it's that uh mike Dunleavy jr has shown the the, the the comfort in making significant moves at least in the off-season <laughs> yeah yeah I the trade deadline, I thought, was a big miss, and there was it was very clear that there were opportunities to move off. Like, has he really but... though? Because like, does he, like taking risk when we're getting getting like KP or like that's it. That's taking risk, and like that's a big move. That's something. That's something different. CP three was like was like the as much move. as as much as I don't disagree with you. I don't think we can fully make a judgment on him until the off season. I think you got to give him a full 12 calendar months, as frustrating as it fucking is. And I would have liked to see, <laughs> like, like honestly, I, I think we all agree, would have liked to see something at the deadline. Would have liked to see 100%. movement there. They, were, they made a decision that nothing substantial is going to happen. So let's just roll to the end of the year when we have all our optionality on the table. Okay, you have all your optionality on the table. Uh, you know, July 8th, 10th whatever date you want to consider i better see a roster that has me like a little more excited or or i'm or i'm gonna be you know i'm gonna be joining uh geo uh on the, the dunleavy is a clown don't you know well, that that's the thing, you know, we all know the excuses like it's the same it's the same ones every year that's the thing like it's the same ones every year which is, which is my biggest fear. like you've heard them before Sure, sure. I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I'm just saying, like, realistically speaking, I will give the man 12 months. I will give him. I will give him. He had two off seasons to to show me something, and then, and then, you don't want to hear me. No, like two off seasons, and Steph's is like late prime is the thing. Is, I mean, who knows? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Like, All right, Gio, appreciate time? you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Eh, I don't know. It's it's it, well, what I'm saying is this one's the last one. All right, we'll go. Um. All right, I said, Nesh, I appreciate you coming on. Guys, Thanks for having plug me. Before we get out of here, check out GSW Fast Break. It's the Warriors fan blog. Uh, blogs. slash warriors Um. 
and have a good weekend, everyone. And we'll see you on Sunday. And then well, we may not see you on Sunday.